Today I want to talk about Murder House by James Patterson and some of the things I liked about it and some of the things I didn't, and sort of uh, what works and what doesn't as far as my own personal tastes. But uh, before we do that, let's read the back of the book. Number 7 Ocean Drive is a house with a horrific past. It was the setting of a series of depraved killings in a small seaside town of Bridgehampton that have never been solved. Neglected, empty, and rumored to be cursed, it's known as the murder house, and locals keep their distance. Detective Jenna Murphy is hoping to escape her troubled past and rehabilitate a career on the rocks, but when a Hollywood power broker and his mistress are found dead in the abandoned murder house, Jenna becomes involved in a case that at first seems open and shut, but soon reveals more secrets than she could possibly imagine. So in the first chapter or two, we learn that Jenna Murphy was a New York City detective who wound up quitting her job after she was set up by some dirty cops uh, to make it look like she was skimming or taking drugs or money or something uh, that she wasn't really because she found out that they were. She moves to the Hamptons to work as a small town local cop under her uncle, who is the chief of police. Murder isn't unheard of in the Hamptons, but four in one summer, each more grisly than the last, has set the entire department on edge. Jenna's big city cop experience or big city detective experience tells her that there's more to the case than what they're finding, uh, but it takes a tragedy in her own life before she's able to begin to put the pieces together. By that time, it's too late. The killer is already after her, and she doesn't know who it is or why they've targeted her. Uh, the book is fast-paced, it keeps you guessing. I found that while I was reading it, every time a new turn would happen or a new twist, I was accusing somebody else of being the killer, uh, and that's kind of what you want in a novel like this. It's certainly what you've come to expect with James Patterson. Um, that doesn't mean that the book was perfect, but the suspense slash thriller parts of the book were well done. It's one of the reasons that James Patterson is so well known and is so prominent in this genre is because he's so good at spooling out information and making you suspicious of everyone and making you second guess your own conclusions. Um, it's what he's good at and there's a reason that he is such a behemoth in this genre. That doesn't mean the book was perfect, so let's talk about some of the things that kind of rubbed me the wrong way or struck me as off or um, not particularly well researched. There were a lot of times that in the book where I was questioning things like police procedure. I'm like, that that can't be right. Surely that's not the way that things are done. Like, that's not submissible in court. You can't do that. Um, that's illegal. Uh, those sorts of things. So that, that struck me as odd. I, I don't know if that's a Patterson thing. I don't read a lot of James Patterson. Um, I've been kind of on a thriller kick lately, but that is not really my go-to genre. Um, so it could just be that things like that are sort of glossed over, kind of like um, TV court dramas or TV cop procedurals, where they just sort of um, gloss over, for the sake of an interesting story, the way that things are really done. Um, and that could be what's happening, and, and maybe it's just me that's, that's being nitpicky, but uh, definitely there were some things that they were doing, that the cop characters were doing, that, that rubbed me wrong or struck me as, as off or, or incorrect. There were also some things about the way that the main character, Jenna Murphy, was portrayed that felt off or cheap, maybe is the right word, or it, it didn't feel like a woman. It felt like a man with tits. I, I don't know how to explain it. Um, I can honestly say that as a woman, I have never looked at a man and had the over-sexualized, constant bombardment of physical carnal desire <laughs> that this character had. Um, and, I, and I know that not all women think the same and not all women feel the same, of course, um, but it, it felt very much like a man's interpretation of what he wants a woman to have thought than the way that women actually process information. I don't, I don't know a better way to explain it than that. It just, it didn't feel like a woman to me. It felt like a man with tits, which is fine if that's what you're going for, but it didn't feel like that's what they were going for. Um, there were also a lot of situations where this cop was sort of having sort of the old school temper tantrum, the like 1980s cop uh, TV temper tantrum where, you know, the cops raging against the, the chief and, and throwing things around and beating up the suspects and stuff. And, and she's never held accountable um, for those actions. In real life, she would have lost her job many times over. Um, she wouldn't, certainly wouldn't be a cop. 
Um, she thought she knew better than everybody else. She thought she knew better than procedure. She thought she knew better than science. Um, and, uh, you know, she was really vocal about how stupid she thought everybody was. Um, and she was obnoxious and rude and, and violent. Um, she, she, at one point she takes a gun out and, and aims it at one of the suspects and then actually like pulls the trigger and she doesn't hit him, but you just don't do that. Like that's, she'd be arrested, you know, and, and it's just sort of glossed over. Like it's never even mentioned. Um, it's never even mentioned again. Like it, 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 there's no consequences for any of her actions or any of the, the temper tantrums that she has. And, uh, that whole concept sort of bent reality for me. The fact that she was never held accountable for any of her actions, um, that, that everybody around her just sort of had to bend around Jenna Murphy's will. And uh, she, she was a main character with main character syndrome, and I don't know a better way to describe it than that. I would argue that when you're reading a suspense novel, you're reading it more for the plot than for the characters, but when a character is that badly portrayed or that badly written, um, it can be a little jarring. I found it jarring, but again, this isn't really my genre. Um, I did enjoy the book overall. Um, I enjoyed the suspense aspects of it, but the characters felt shallow and um, it, it felt like somebody took a bunch of old cop shows, took personality traits out of all of the main character cops, threw them in a bag, jumbled them up, and then dumped them into this character. The characters were not well written, but the plot was. So uh, if that sort of thing doesn't bother you, if you're really into suspense and you like the never really knowing and trying to guess who done it, um, that part is really well done. Um, so I'm kind of meh. On this book there were aspects of it I liked and aspects of it I didn't. If you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and of course if you like the way that I present information hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. You can find all of my social media contacts in the description and of course if you want to keep up with me and the progress I'm making on my current novel you can do that at effiewritesbooks.com. Thank you so much for watching, have an excellent day, and I'll see you next time.